We're going to be chatting with an expert aviation attorney in just a moment about the latest on this Osprey crash, which took place in Japan earlier this week. Japan's top government spokesperson now expressing concerns that the U.S. military now continuing to fly Osprey aircraft in the country without providing adequate information about Wednesday's fatal crash. I want to turn now to uh, attorney Timothy Loringer. He's also a Marine Corps veteran and trial attorney who focuses on uh, aviation. Uh, thanks so much for joining the show. We sure do appreciate it, Timothy. Thank you very much for having me today and putting a spotlight on this. Absolutely. Well, first off, uh, your reaction to, to an incident like this, yet another incident involving the Osprey. It's heartbreaking uh, to hear that another Osprey has crashed. Uh, there have been three in the last 18 months. Uh, that's very concerning to everyone who serves in the military, uh, especially those who are uh, particularly attached to these aircraft, who every day they use this aircraft to try and fulfill their mission, uh, and it's a concern. Absolutely. Now tell me, what exactly is an Osprey? Who uses it? Uh, I know it's a military ac aircraft, but is it used by all branches? Um, and what is it primarily used for? Well, the Osprey is a very unique aircraft because it is able to take off like a helicopter and then fly like an airplane. And this is uh, the aircraft that was uh, used to replace another helicopter called the CH-46 uh, in the Marine Corps arsenal. It is flown by the Air Force and the Marine Corps uh, and the Navy, and it's also flown by the Japanese military. So it is a, it's a very important aircraft. Uh, it serves an important role, and it's, uh, it's got some issues that need to be looked into, unfortunately. And what are some of those issues? What are the reasons? And when you hear three you know, military crashes using the same type of aircraft, you would think maybe more would be done to look into this uh, to prevent them from happening again. Well, in, in 2022, there was a crash uh, of an Osprey attached to VMM-364, the Purple Foxes, and unfortunately, five Marines died. From that uh, crash, the Marine Corps conducted an investigation and determined that it was caused by something called a dual hard clutch engagement. That's an issue that has not been fully explained. What is causing this dual hard clutch engagement still, still appears to be unknown. And more work needs to be done to by the manufacturer of the aircraft, by the military to determine the actual cause, the root cause. Until that happens, there will be a lot of uncertainty for the people who get into the aircraft every day. That's the pilots, the crew, uh, and the military uh, service members who use it to go from place to place. And the families, their families are also concerned. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like I said, the, the root cause has not been determined yet. That more work needs to be done. And my understanding is you also represent family members of those uh, who have died in similar crashes. Um, what is their reaction when they see yet another one of these crashes? Well, it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, they not only have they gone through their own incredible loss, uh, but they are now worried about other people who who are suffering similarly. Um, there's nothing. There's no way to explain, you know, what they've gone through. And when, when they see another crash has happened, they worry that it's that there may be ties. You know, there might be a common thread between these uh, for an issue that has not quite been addressed. And if that's the case, uh, what they're asking for, why they have come to me uh, to represent them is to try and uh, put a little bit of momentum, so to speak, to ask some questions of the military and the manufacturer to, uh, for the, so that they will be motivated to find the answer, make the aircraft as safe as possible. Absolutely. Uh, no people should uh, certainly be dying in these types of incidents. Of course, tra training incidents happen uh, often, but the U.S. military uh, obviously has to uh, work harder to pre prevent these. Any word yet on what may have led to the incident in Japan? And uh, any comment on G Japan's reaction to this, their military, uh, their spokesperson saying that they're definitely concerned that the U.S. continues those flights uh, following that crash? 
As of yet, it's undetermined, you know, what what the crash, what caused the crash uh, in Japan. Um, and I'd just like to say that, you know, my heart, all of our hearts go out to uh, the men and women who serve in the, three, the 21st Special Operations Squadron. Um, the aircraft hasn't been recovered yet. Unfortunately, there are service members who are still missing. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to look into this. As far as uh, Japan's request to the military that the aircraft be grounded, uh, certainly I can understand why they would ask that. Uh, I think the families also would like that to happen because right now it's unknown what caused that uh, caused the crash. And it's very possible that another mechanical failure could occur uh, the aircraft if the aircraft are still in use. And so family uh, members of, are, are worried about their service members going into the aircraft. Uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to take a pause, to take a deep look at the aircraft, to study all the information available, and then make appropriate decisions uh, with, with information. Timothy Loringer there, a Marine Corps veteran and a trial attorney in Los Angeles who's joining us today. Uh, he also represents the families of people who have been involved in these deadly aviation crashes. We appreciate you joining the show, Timothy. Anything we didn't ask you, anything you'd like to add? No, I think uh, what's important here is that, uh, you know, people understand that our, our military people deserve, our military people, those men and women who are in service, deserve the best equipment available. They already put their lives on the line every day. Uh, they take risks every day. We can't ask them to take risks that are not calculated. And so we, we ask that more be done to ensure that they are uh, as safe as possible. All right, Timothy, thanks so much for joining the show. We sure do appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.